just going to talk about some basic soldering here. I have a few things to go over. Several different uh, things that you'll be soldering on. One is uh, little components like this. Little breadboards. This one here is uh, got uh, solder pads on both sides, which makes it easy. I really prefer these types of uh, breadboards. This one is uh, one side only. Of course, all the legs of your components come through this side, and you solder it here. And then you place your actual components on this side. This board is uh, traced on the other side. All the connections are, all the lines are connected to one another. I use these for hubs. But placing uh, things on these boards are pretty easy to do. You set it on the component side. If you flip it over, you have a, a solder inside that has your little solder pads. And I'm going to solder this uh, little 8 pin socket on here. And what I do is I put two of them on here so that I can keep it straight. And for purposes of the camera, I'm actually doing this on the table because uh, in the holder it's the wrong angle. I could probably set it up, but I just can't get close enough to it to solder. So what I'm doing here is tinning the iron, put a little bit of solder on it and cleaning it off. And then I'll put another little dab on here to help uh, transfer the heat. The first thing I do is uh, set the solder and iron down, heat the pad and the pin. And as soon as I see that solder melt on the pad, then uh, I hit it with uh, just a little bit of solder, which... Uh, completes the, the solder on the joint there. So I'm just applying very little solder here. Uh, it's already started with some on the on the joint and some on my iron. So this allows me to zip through pretty quick here. And be sure when you're doing this you have a fan or something circulating the air just for safety. It's a, so you're not breathing this stuff if you're doing a lot of solder. I'm just working through, applying a little bit of solder on each one of these. Again, the pad is applying a lot of solder already, so I just put very, very little solder on here to uh, make this uh, work. And because this is a double-sided board, it uh, has solder on the other side, the component side, which allows the uh, solder to wick through. And I'm going to remove the other socket. Now this one's soldered in, ready to rock and roll. Uh, whenever I put these sockets in, I always make sure that I put pin one, which is a notched area here on the outside, so that I don't put my chips in backwards. I've done that. I uh, haven't actually fried one, but I have put them in backwards. Now I'm going to put a, another component, a resistor on here. And what I'm doing here is uh, just kind of seeing where this one fits. It's a little big, but... Uh, so I just slide it through a couple of holes here. And uh, once I do, uh, I bend the, the other leads out a little bit just to hold that resistor in there. I don't fold them all the way. Uh, you don't want them to be flat on the board because it'll stretch across here and possibly get into some other components. So basic same concept, I heat the pad, apply very little solder, and uh, once this is in here it's uh, soldered in, it wicks through to the other side. The amount of solder I'm using is just so very little, it takes up about this much uh, for each joint maybe. But you can see how it wicks through the other side holds that component in. It's getting a good connection here. Again, I see a lot of this is this board. I, I like these double-sided boards with pads on both sides. And here I'm just removing the excess uh, off, these, off this resistor. And that's in, ready to go. When you get into a problem and you get too much solder, you got a couple of options. You can use a solder sucker like this. It comes with extra tips like you're seeing here. And you can order extra tips if needed, but uh, 
This here is a vacuum type. Uh, you can cock it and then once you get it cocked, then you press the little button and it pulls off the solder. What I'm doing here is just applying a, an excessive amount of solder just to show you how this solder sucker works. You heat the solder and then push the button and it vacuums the solder out of the out of the uh, holes or away from the components that you're trying to get. Now if you're getting real close stuff you'll want to use uh, solder wick. So here I'm going to demonstrate how to do a uh, pigtail uh, connecting two wires together. It's, uh, what I do is I strip the wire back and I twist each of them uh, pretty tight. Then I can put them together and then twist these two tightly together. You want to do this as tight as you can. And for the purposes of the camera, I'm doing this a little bit different. I'm actually holding my soldering iron on the bottom. When you do this, you want to really do it from the top so that the solder wicks down through the uh, wire using gravity. And you can see what I'm doing here is I heat the wire and then I touch the solder to the wire which uh, wicks into the wire. I'm going to cut it off to just clean it up a little bit. And that's a pigtail. The next one we're going to do is a uh, inline and uh, basically the same steps here at the beginning. Just strip it off and twist it up as good as you can. Do both ends. Now, if you're doing this in line, of course it's going to be a little bit diff more difficult to twist. Probably get stuck under a, some bench work or something. But what you do is you just make a perfect X out of this so that uh, you have the same distance on all four sides. And then you twist using your thumbs for each thumb goes a different direction. And you just put this, uh, you twist this out so that those those ends come and meet up about where the uh, plastic sheathing is on the other side. And uh, when you get it twisted up, you'll have a perfect little area here. And again, just uh, going to touch the soldering iron, get it hot, and then start applying my solder. And as I do, I just keep feeding the solder in as it, it uh, absorbs it. You can see I get a little bit of a bubble here. So I clean my iron, touch the solder, clean my iron. And that's how you do an end line. Now what we're going to do here is uh, use a piece of heat shrink. And if you're doing this under the bench, you'll want to put this heat shrink on before you do any soldering because... Uh, you don't have a way to get it on if you don't, so you'll slide it on first and then solder your joint. So I just take this and I slide it up onto the the wire, get up there where I did my solder and work. The heat shrink works great. All you need to do here then is uh, heat this and it'll shrink in, it'll shrink to the joint there. Helps make it a little bit stronger. So I'm just using a cigarette lighter. I just heat it up low. Don't have to heat it up a whole lot. And there's other methods too you can use. You can use a cigarette lighter or use a torch. If I'm doing a lot and have like six or seven different pieces of heat shrink I need to do, I'll use this so I don't have to uh, keep flicking a cigarette lighter. And this gets a little bit hotter than a lighter, but uh, just use it like this and just kind of wave it back and forth on the heat shrink. And some people are actually uh, skilled enough to use this to solder with. It does get pretty hot. Uh, it'll, it'll melt quite a bit of different things that you need to melt. And I think I'll show you here. It just gets right into this solder. 